If your probability experiment involves selecting people or multiple items from a group, or even just repeating the same probability experiment over and over again, like flipping a coin five times, we would use a multiplication rule to calculate probabilities of certain sequences of events. So for example, in these two problems from the homework, we have uh, selecting two people and uh, in number seven, selecting two uh, marbles from a jar. Um, and in both of these problems, we're saying that uh, we want to find the probability that uh, both of the outcomes are the same. And the, First problem, it's both own a dog, and in the second problem, it's both are red. And that wouldn't necessarily need to be the case, but we want to start with kind of um, more simple outcomes here before we scale it up. And in the next homework or the next chapter, we will look at these problems in more detail. But for now, we're just going to look for, for example, in number six, probability that the first person owns a dog and the second person owns a dog. So we're essentially um, finding the probability of A and B, where A represents the first person owning a dog and B the second. We see that we would have to use the multiplication rule here. We cannot find the union of A and B the way we do, um, or actually we can't find the intersection, I should say, of A and B like we would with a contingency table. Here we need to separate it out. So we start with the probability that the first person owns a dog, and that one is 19%, or 0.19. This, this probability is going to represent the probability that the second person owns a dog, B, given that the first did. Now, A and B are actually independent. The likelihood of the second person owning a dog is the same as the first, and that's because we have so many people to choose from that really just taking one person out who is a dog owner won't really affect the outcome. Imagine like a million decks of cards stacked up and you draw a red card. So you're still going to have approximately 50% red cards even though you've removed one. So really as long as we, ha we are selecting no more than 5% of the population, we can really treat these as independent, these first and second draws. If you went over that 5%, for example, if you were to draw 10 cards from a 52 card deck, that's more than 5%, you're going to start to see these probabilities change. There's going to be some dependence there. Because, for example, you could draw four kings, and then your probability of drawing a king drops from about 7% to 0%. So going back to this problem, we have so many people to choose from, we're not going to significantly change the population with just two of them, so we just multiply uh, the 19%, 0.19, by itself. Say we were selecting 10 people, then we would keep multiplying 10 times, uh, that would be a, an exponent, there we go, 0.19 to the 10th power, and that's coming out to be scientific notation. It's such a small uh, decimal that we have um, a decimal with seven zeros if we move this decimal to the left, left eight times. Um, so again, uh, next chapter we'll look at those problems more specifically. Here we just have the two people. And moving on to the next problem, in the uh, next problem we are going to change the population significantly. Here, two marbles, even though that's not very much, 2 out of 29 is going to be more than 5%. 2 out of 29 is about 7%. So we want to just do that check for these problems, and in the next chapter, we will do the same. So here we're selecting two marbles. Uh, we want both to be red, so our P of A and B is A represents the first marble being red, and B represents the second. So we start with the probability of the first marble being red, and there were nine on my problem red marbles out of the 29. So there's my P of A. Now I need to multiply by probability of B given A. So probability that the second marble is red given that the first one's red. Well, if we selected a red marble, then there's only going to be eight left, and there's only going to be 28 marbles left total. So this is how it looks when we draw from a smaller group, when we, when we draw from less than 5% of the entire group, um, we, we really don't need to do this, but when we have um, you know, more than 5%, we're going to adjust 
those numbers as we go. Um, we can try and see what happens if we were just to square 9 29 and see the difference here. So this is a, you know, 8.87%. This one's 9.63%. So it's significant enough that we would want to um, consider those as dependent draws and adjust our probability for that second draw. In problem number 18, we'll come back to this issue. Here we're looking at a contingency table, but we're selecting two pedestrian deaths from the table. So this is that repeated trial situation or that sample of multiple people where we're going to have to determine if the second person's uh, likelihood will depend on the first, or specifically if the likelihood of the driver um, not being intoxicated in that second death is uh, dependent on the first. Now, if you just say the words, you might think, well, how would these be dependent on one another? But that's not exactly what I mean. What I mean is, are we selecting a significant number of these where, for example, we could pick all 45 of these people and then um, we have a significantly different probability than where we started? Or like drawing half the deck, uh, you might run out of kings and drop to a zero probability. So what we do is we say, how many do we have total in the entire table? And that number is 986. If we pick two of those, two out of 986 is about 0.2%. So that's well below 5%, which means we do not need to adjust our numbers. Uh, our probability of B given A is basically just the probability of B. And so here we're saying the probability that the first um, fatality involved um, a driver who was not intoxicated and the second did as well. All we need to do is find that first probability. So adding up these two numbers, dividing by the grand total, um, that one would end up being, for my problem, 858 over 986. So if I just square that, multiply it by itself. And what I maybe would do is just put it in parentheses and square it. That would be my probability for two of these selected fatalities involving drivers who were not intoxicated. And we can even check, you know, if we did want to adjust the probabilities. So here would be that first one that I select, and then I'm gonna take one away. So that's 857 out of 985, we can see, okay, that probability um, is pretty close. We have 75.7% or 75.72% compared to 75.71%. So we do have a change, but it's not significant. And that's the point of checking to see if you go over 5%.